So this is where we stop in the previous lesson where I actually bring you through to guide you on how to identify within a vascular bundle where is the phloem tissue and where is the xylem tissue. So I'm going to show you more diagrams today so that you become more familiar. And then I'll bring you through to exactly in the root and stem and leaf, where are the xylem and phloem tissues, okay? So this is another um, micrograph of a plant, a monocot stem that has been stained, right? So here, what you can see is that this is a monocot stem. So similar to the previous slide, it's a monocot as well. So what you can see here is, look at this region here, where you have got hex pentagonal cell, hexagonal cell, we call all of them angular. Okay, as long as they've got sharp angle in the cell, whether it's triangle, rectangle, okay, square, pentagon, pentagon hexagonal, they're all called angular. Okay, angular. So these are the um, sieve tube element. So we are referring to the cell. So when you call the cell, it's called the sieve tube element. If it says sieve, sieve tube is referring to the whole tube made up of many cells joined end to end. So if you were to label the cell here, please label the name of the cell because we can only see the cell rather than the tube in this transverse section. Okay, so it should be sieve tube element, right? So this diagram I obtained from internet, so they label it sieve tube. To be more accurate, it should be sieve tube element. Then the C are the tiny cells at the side of the sieve tube element, which is the companion cell. So label it companion cell. Then you see this solid black color line is a line that is drawn surrounding the phloem. It's very easy to identify because the cells outside the phloem are the cell with a lignified wall, which is pink in color because of the stain. So it's very easy to outline the border line of the phloem, okay? And then at the bottom here, you can see that this is outlined, the entire outline again, okay? Um, where outside is also the cell with thickened wall with lignin and pink color or red color. So the borderline between the xylem and the sclerenchyma is very easy to identify and to draw, okay? And then inside the xylem, you learn xylem tissue, but four types of cells. So expect to see different kinds of cells, big and small cells, as well as the cell wall can be stained red and not stained red. Okay, cell walls thick and thin, very easy to see. So here you can see this one here, they label it xylem vessel. So I will want you to label it xylem vessel element, right? Xylem vessel element. These are also xylem vessel, but they're smaller, right? These two are bigger, these are smaller. Then you've got the air spaces, you see, irregularly shaped and there's no lignified wall. So this is an air space. And these are other types of cells without lignified walls, right? Which can be parenchyma, okay? So surrounding this, vas this xylem and phloem, you've got this lignified layer of cells. So they are sclerenchyma cell. So sclerenchyma cell, I've told you, is another type of cell in the plant where the wall can be lignified other than the xylem vessel element but they are smaller than the xylem vessel element, so they are also called fiber. So this layer is um, a layer that surrounds the xylem and phloem. So this layer is called the bundle sheath. Sheath means it's a cover. So it's like a cover covering the vascular bundle. So this is called bundle sheath. So the whole thing, from bundle sheath to phloem to xylem is called the vascular bundle. So vascular bundle includes the bundle sheath, which is made of sclerenchyma cell, okay, or sclerenchyma tissue, then the phloem and xylem, okay? 
So this is another vascular bundle. You, you take note, this is vascular bundle in the dicot stem. Just now is monocot stem. So dicot monocot is slightly different, okay, in the arrangement of the xylem and phloem. So what you can see here is, now these cells on top here, they've, got, they've all got lignified wall and they are quite small versus this cell here, which also contain lignified wall, right? So the big and the small. So the small one is the sclerenchyma cell. So this layer is sclerenchyma tissue, which is also called pericycle, okay? So you see, you, you need to draw the borderline to distinguish sclerenchyma other tissue based on the cells that are different. You see the borderline between the sclerenchyma cell and the neighboring cell with, without the lignified wall. So it's quite easy to identify and to draw. Then the next layer is the phloem, right? This is a phloem layer because you can see hexagonal cells, right? And then some tiny, small, either triangular or uh, square, okay? So you've got a big cells with small cells. So this is the phloem, typical phloem structure. And this one could be the sieve plates of the phloem, uh, not phloem, sieve plate of the sieve tube elements, okay? Then the next layer here, you can see that these cells are very simple and usually rectangular, flat and rectangular cell. So this is the cambium, okay? Cambium because cambium is the layer, the layer of tissue in the vascular bundle that is made up of cells that are dividing. So they're supposed to divide, elongate, and differentiate to form the cells in the phloem and xylem. So because they are in a zone of cell division, so they are the smallest cell compared to the rest of the cell because they have not elongated, they have not differentiated. So they're very simple, small, smaller cell in the xylem, uh, smaller cell in the vascular bundle. Okay, so it's very easy to identify. Look for the brick-shaped cell. So usually I'm, I talk about the brick, brick-shaped cell, or I can call it small um, rectangular cell with very thin wall, okay? So usually uh, it's about one, two to three layers of these cambial cells, right? You can see here one, two, three, three layers of cells, right? Certain part, two layers, because this one have started to enlarge already. So this whole layer is cambium. Then the rest of the layer here is the xylem, right? So you can see the, how, what, how to draw the neck, the borderline of xylem is you look at the surrounding cells are very large and irregularly shaped, right? So you also need to know how to describe the cell, huh? large and irregularly shaped, okay? So the cells in the xylem is they are smaller than the cells outside. So therefore, this is the borderline, okay? Uh, this is the borderline, right? So it's the borderline. Okay, so inside the xylem, there are four types of cells. So you can see cells that are big and small. And the big one with the pink color wall and thicker than the surrounding cells because it's lignified and stained, then these are the xylem vessel elements, all right? Xylem vessel element. So the smaller one here, they could be the sclerenchyma. Okay, the smaller one here. The bigger one here are the xylem vessel element. And all these normal cells could be the uh, parenchyma cells, or the packing cells, normal packing cells with thin wall. Okay, parenchyma cells. Okay. So, just now we see the transverse section of the vascular bundle. So, how will the cells look like in longitudinal section? So, if we section it this way, it means longitudinal, along the length of the xylem, then all the cells will look elongated, right? So, you will see right in the center here of the vascular bundle, 
vascular bundle facing the center of the stem. It is the xylem. So you can see the xylem elements. All right, then you can see this is the cambium. And then here is the sieve tube element and the companion cell. Okay. So this is an actual micrograph to show you the vascular bundle, which is made out of, this one is xylem vessel with lignin thickening. Okay. And then this one is the phloem region. So with the sieve tube. Okay. This one is sclerenchyma. This is also sclerenchyma. These are the normal cells, the parenchyma cells. Okay. So after we have covered the function of xylem vessel and sieve tube and component cells, you need to create a table to compare between the xylem and phloem cells and substances transported, direction, speed, and mechanism. So this will be your homework for next week. So at the moment, you are unable to answer all these questions yet. Okay, Some of them, yes, but not all. So this is a plant structure. So you need to know what are the, what, what are the components of the plant and the structures of the plant. Okay, How come there's no name here? So this is shoot system and the root system here, okay? So plant anatomy, so I'm gonna bring you through to easily identify the stem and the stem and the root, okay? So the basic plant body, the stem and the root is made out of four main areas. First layer is epidermis. Epi stands for upon, upon means on. Dermis means skin. So it's a skin means the layer of the tissue surrounding the plant body. So the layer of tissue like the skin surrounding the plant body on the body is called the epidermis. So all the stem, all the root, all the leaves will be covered by epidermis as the outer tissue layer. Then cortex. The word cortex stands for bark. B-A-R-K, bark. So cortex stands for the bark. So it's the area below the epidermis of the stem and the root is called the cortex, okay? Because it's the bark. Then followed by endodermis. Endo means inside, okay? Inside. The mist again is a skin. So it's the layer of, a, a thin layer inside of the plant after the cortex. So you can imagine that it is the epidermis and endodermis that will sandwich the cortex. So it's epidermis and endodermis is like the burger, right? The outer, the upper and lower layer of your burger um, bread. Then the cortex is the meat in the center of the bread. Okay, so epidermis, cortex, endodermis. So after endodermis, we will find the transport system whether it's plant, uh, stem, or in the root, the transport system will be located here, okay? So we look at the root first. So root, you've got the epidermis and the cells in the epidermis may contain root hairs. Cortex, cortex in the root is quite thick and usually it's used for storage and usually they store a uh, starch, okay? Endodermis is single layer of cells, made up of single layer of cells. Then after that, transport system is right in the, in the middle of the roots, which is made out of xylem tissue, phloem tissue, cambium. And this whole structure here is called the steel. So the, this whole structure of transport system in the center of the root is called the steel, made of xylem, phloem, and cambium. Okay. So the xylem is usually located right in the middle, and it is either three-pointed, four-pointed, Okay, or five pointed. So this is xylem in blue color. Then phloem is at the side, All right? The phloem is at the side. Then cambium is usually one layer of cells between the xylem and phloem because this is, it is a cambium that will make the cells in the xylem and phloem. So it must be located between the xylem and phloem. 
So this is a micrograph of example of a root. So you can see the epidermis is the layer of, epidermis is a tissue made up of sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three layers of cells, okay, in the outer region of the plant body. Then the cortex, you can see the cortex here, the cells are irregularly shaped, quite big and irregularly shaped. And inside the cell, you can see a lot of purple color structure. These purple color structures are actually the starch grains stored inside the parenchyma cell. Okay, parenchyma cells are all the cells that are uh, irregularly shaped, quite big, used for packing purposes, means fill up the space. Okay, and not only for packing, in this case, it stores starch. Then right in the center is the steel. Okay, the steel, which you can see the xylem is four-pointed star, and then surrounding are the uh, phloem. Okay. So in the stem, we've got epidermis. And epidermis, sometimes epidermal cell will have got epidermal hair. Then cortex is thinner than the root, and it's also for um, transportation, lateral transport, packing, as well as for storage. Okay, and then transport system is after the endodermis layer. So we have got the xylem, right? It's always the inner layer of the vascular bundle. Then the phloem is always the outer layer. Then the cambium is between xylem and phloem. Okay, so they exist as separate vascular bundles. So the transport system exists as separate vascular bundle. Now, why is it called vascular bundle? It's because of the word vas means vessel. Bundle means a whole group of the vessels. So they have got a whole group, a whole bunch of vessels which are made up of xylem vessels and sieve tubes arranged together, so it's called vascular bundle, okay? So the pith, now in the stem, in the center of the stem is called the pith, right? The pith is also made up of parenchyma cells that will uh, fill up the space inside here because parenchyma cell function is packing. But some stem will be hollow. So when the stem is hollow, the pith will be hollow. Okay, hollow means there are no cells there. Okay, like the kangkong that you know, the vegetable kangkong, the stem is hollow one. So some plants, the stems are hollow, right? So this example of a stem, so you can see that this stem is not totally um, round. Okay, so different stem got different shape one. So what is obvious here is the center, the center is made up of cells that are very big and irregularly shaped. So these cells are parenchyma cell, and this tissue layer is called the pith. Then you can see a lot of vascular bundles, right? All of them are almost triangular, and they are located at the peripheral of the, the stem. Peripheral is at the side. It's not in the center, right? It's at the side. So all arranged in the peripheral of the stem. And you can see different color, different color and texture will allow you to identify different tissue layers. So you see here where the cells with the wall that's quite thick and the cells are quite big. So this area is the um, xylem, right? And then this area where the cells are, uh, the wall are very, very thin, okay? and green in color, this is the cambium area. So after cambium area, this area will be the phloem. And you can see that the phloem and another layer outer of the phloem is different color. Can I see? Cannot. Cannot really see. Okay. It looks like there are one layer here, second layer, third layer, and fourth layer. There could be a fourth layer, see, third layer and fourth layer, but I cannot uh, really know unless I can use the microscope and zoom in and magnify this area to see whether it's actually two layers or one layer. Two layers means inner layer is the phloem, outer layer could be 
um, the pericycle. It could be the pericycle layer. Okay, so not sure because cannot see very clearly in this magnification. So in this magnification, yes, it's already magnified the vascular bundle. You can see very clearly that this area here is the xylem. Then this area here where the cells are flat, right? And then no, not lignified and brick shaped. So this is the cambium, right? Cambium area. Then this part here is phloem. And this part here is the sclerenchyma. Okay. In, you can see that in this stem, there are no um, lignified wall here. No sclerenchyma because there's no pink color. But this one has. So this is actually considered as a secondary thickening. Secondary thickening means when, when the plant grow bigger and bigger, the stem will also, diameter of the stem also will grow larger and larger. So this is due to secondary thickening. So how does it grow larger is when there are more xylem and phloem that are being formed from the cambium. Plus, outside of the cambium, there's another additional layer that's being formed, which is the sclerenchyma cells. This is to provide additional support to the plant. Because as the plant grows bigger, it will grow taller. So when it grow taller, you need more support tissue. So the lignin is very rigid. It is stronger than the cellulose wall. So therefore, there'll be more lignified cells that are being formed to provide additional mechanical support to the plant as the plant body grows bigger. Okay, so this is called the secondary um, thickening in the plant. Then as the plant grows bigger, you, you, um, you see the site here also start to have got lignified wall. Huh? Okay, the site here outside the vascular bundle. Okay. So we're going to look at different tissue, different tissue and different cells that you can find inside the plant body. Okay. So the first tissue is called the colon chyma. Now, colon chyma, this tissue is made of colon chyma cells. So they are called colon chyma because this cell has got thickened cellulose wall. So it's thicker than the normal cellulose wall to provide mechanical support. So usually colon chyma are found at the immediately below the epidermis layer. And usually it is formed when the, when the plant grows bigger to provide ad additional mechanical support. So in this case here, the cellulose wall will thicken with more cellulose only. So it's called colon chyma. Okay. Then parenchyma are the, is a tissue that's made of parenchyma cells. So they are mainly used for storage or packing, means to fill up the space, as well as lateral transport because material has been transported from cell to cell to cell. So provide a medium for lateral transport across the roots, across the stem, across the leaf. Okay. Pericycle is a layer uh, below the endodermis. So you've got the epidermis, cortex, endodermis. Then after endodermis is pericycle. Okay. Peri means perimeter. Perimeter means surrounding. Cycle. Cycle means in a circle. Right. So it's a perimeter surrounding the xylem and phloem. So it's called pericycle. So pericycle a function is to synthesize lateral roots. Lateral roots means you know that the normal roots, right? When you see the roots, they've got some branches coming out like this. So this is the main root, okay? So you've got the branches that are coming out from the main root. So this branch root, so this is called the branch root, right? This is the main root. So how does the branch root grow from the main root? It grows from the pericycle layer. So if you look at the slide, you start to see um, lateral root growing outwards. The branch root will grow from here. Okay, the branch root will grow from here. So you start to see um, this branch root grow up from the pericycle layer. 
Okay, so for synthesizing lateral roots and also to create root pressure, you should learn later on. Endodermis is the layer that sent um, the layer below the cortex. So the cells of the endodermis is called endodermal cell. So all the name here are tissue name. Uh, and the cell, you just have to add the cell in behind this tissue name. It's called colon chyma cell, parent chyma cell, pericycle cell, endodermal cell. Okay, endodermal cell has got suberin, which is a type of waxy um, component. Okay, in the wall. So because of this um, spexy component, the wall becomes impermeable to water. So this is to force all the material to pass through the cell surface membrane in order to control this, this material that enters the xylem vessel. Okay, so because of the wall containing suberin in the endodermal layer, the material cannot pass through the wall. It will be forced to pass through the membrane and the membrane can be used to filter material that can pass through it and then enter the xylem vessel to be transported to the cell. Okay. So in the stem, uh, in the mature stem, there also will be colon chyma, right, to provide mechanical support. Then the cortex area will be made up of parenchyma for storage, for packing, for lateral transport. Then um, secondary thickening in the outer area of the phloem that could be sclerenchyma to provide mechanical support. So now we're going to look at the cells in detail. Huh? So colenchyma is the name of tissue. The cell is colenchyma cells. There are cells where the cellulose wall is thickened. So usually when you look at the cells, the corner of the cell is thickened. Can you see the corner? The corner of the cells is thickened. So this is a typical structure of colon chyma cells. Okay, so it's only made out of cellulose wall that's thickened. Now. So it's used to support all young plants because young plants, they have not made their lignified wall yet. They have not made the, 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 the wood yet, okay? So they don't have woody tissues. So young plants are supported by uh, sclerenchyma, cell wall that is thickened with cellulose. And also to support herbaceous plant because herbaceous plants will not produce wood, okay? So you can see that this is epidermis and below the epidermis, there will be the colenchyma. So this one looks like a stem, okay? It looks like a stem to me. Parenchyma tissues made of parenchyma cells. So parenchyma cells will fill up the bulk of the cortex. They are living cells. They're very thin cellulose wall, hemicellulose and pectin, and irregularly shaped. So mainly used for packing, lateral transport, and sometimes may also store, okay, store materials. Like here, you can see the starch grains inside the cells. And in the leaf, so in the leaf, all these parent chyma cells are already specialized to become palisade mesophyll cell and spongy mesophyll cell. So they contain chloroplast in it, all right? So parent chyma cells are specialized to contain chloroplast in it. It's called the chlorine chyma. Chlorine means having chloroplast, okay? Chlorine chyma. So these palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll cells, they are also chlorine chyma cells. So these are the parent chyma cells inside the potato tuber. And you can see a lot of starch grains being stored in it. And the cells are irregularly shaped and very big. So there are parent chyma cells found in the potato tuber to store starch. So endodermal cells, right, is this layer of the cell where the wall is, is very thick, is pink or, or red in color, but the cells are very, very small and rectangular. So this is the endodermis, made of endodermal cells. And the wall will be, um, will contain suberin. So as the plant becomes more mature and the cell becomes older and older, the entire wall will be filled with suberin. 
Okay. Sclerenchyma cells. So sclerenchyma cells are cells with lignified wall. And usually they are found below the epidermis. You see here, right below the epidermis. So this is epidermis, this is a leaf. Huh? So below the epidermis, you can see sclerenchyma. And outside the phloem, so this is vascular bundle, outside the phloem here, you may find the sclerenchyma. So this labeling is not so accurate. Huh? Phloem is this region here, okay? This part here is the sclerenchyma already. Okay. Sometimes you'll find the sclerenchyma surrounding the vascular bundle, which I've shown you just now. There's a monocot stem where surrounding the monocot stem, we label it as bundle sheath. So that bundle sheath is made out of sclerenchyma cells. So sclerenchyma cell, because it's got lignified wall, all the cells with lignified wall are dead cells because the lignin is impermeable to water. So eventually the cell will die off, okay? So sclerenchyma cell, they are pitted with lignified walls and tapering ends. That's why they are also called the, um, they are called the fiber, okay? They're also called fiber. So it's to provide mechanical support. So um, because the wall is lignified, so it provides additional mechanical support. So usually in, in secondary thickening, okay? And because the wall is also lignified and lignin is impermeable to water, it will reduce water passages uh, through the wall of the cell. It means the water cannot pass through the wall of the cell. So this is to reduce passage of water, okay? In certain area of the plant. So here, this is what you need to draw and label. So putting everything together, um, this is the distribution of xylem and phloem in a herbaceous dicotyledonous root. This is in your syllabus. So a root, right, you can find that outer layer is the epidermis and some of the, the epidermal cell, we've got extension hours, which is called the root hair, right? Then followed by cortex, endodermis, pericycle, then the phloem and the xylem, okay? Now I label it proto xylem and meta xylem because sometimes you can find some text you label it as proto. Now the word proto means the first, remember proto, prototype means the first one, okay? So the first xylem that's being formed is called proto xylem. Meta stands for after. So the xylem that's formed after proto xylem is formed is called meta xylem. So if you can, uh, you, if you can remember the meaning of the prefix, then you you will understand the meaning of the word, even though you have not seen the word before. So that's so powerful about you learning the meaning of the prefix in biology. Okay, you have learned this when you learn mitosis, right? Right, meta phase. Meta stands for after. Okay, so where is the location of the xylem? It's right in the center of the root. Then the phloem is at the side after the xylem. Okay, then cambium will be located between xylem and phloem. It's a very thin, usually single layer, sometimes double, triple, usually single layer of cells. Okay, so this whole structure, including the pericycle, is called the steel or the vascular strand in the center of the root. We don't call it vascular bundle, la. we call it steel or vascular strand, okay? So in the stem, also outer layer is the epidermis, and epidermis will be covered with cuticle. In the root, it's not covered with cuticle because we want to absorb water from the soil. But in the stem, it will be covered with cuticle to reduce water loss, okay? So epidermis can be covered with cuticle. Then some of the cells, Epidermal cells may got extension, so we call it epidermal hair, right? Epidermal hair. Then we've got cortex, endodermis, hang on, and endodermis. Then you've got the vascular bundle, huh? okay? The vascular bundle. Vascular bundle right in the center is the xylem. It's always in the center one. Then after xylem is the cambium here. This is a the cambium. Then you've got the phloem. 
right? Then outside the phloem in the older plant, you've got secondary thickening. So you'll see the pericycle made up of sclerenchyma cells. Okay, you can also label this as sclerenchyma. You label it sclerenchyma because it's made of sclerenchyma cell. You label it pericycle due to the location of this in the stem. This location is called pericycle. Okay. This location is called cortex. Cortex can be made out of two types of cell. It can be made out of colonchyma, parenchyma, sometimes sclerenchyma. But this location is called cortex. So this tissue is called cortex because of this location. Okay. So again, pericycle phloem cambium xylem is called the vascular bundle. So this is the leaf. If you make a transverse section of the leaf, you will be able to see the leaf with the upper and lower epidermis. Okay, and then you've got the photosynthetic cells, which is a palisad mesophyll tissue, spongy mesophyll tissue, made of palisad mesophyll cells and spongy mesophyll cells. And the rest are the vascular bundles. The one in the center is the biggest one. Okay, on top is always xylem and bottom is always phloem. Uh, because for me, I remember it by xylem will supply water to the main photosynthetic cell of the leaf, which is the palisade mesophyll. Because this is facing the upper area, this is the one that can get the most sunlight. So this is the most important cell for photosynthesis. So water will be easily accessible if the xylem is on top of vascular bundle. Of course, spongy mesophyll cells will also photosynthesize. Okay? But it is located in the lower, um, lower region of the leaf below the palisade mesophyll, so it will get less sunlight. Right? So vascular tissues form a network. So you can see that this is a vascular tissue. It forms like a network. The side veins, these are the side veins, they are usually smaller. They will eventually merge with the main vein in the center, like this one here, right? All the side veins will eventually merge with the main vein. The whole arrangement is net like. And then uh, the main vein will run in the center of the leaf and becomes larger and larger in diameter. And it ends at the petiole. This is called the petiole, which attaches the leaf to the stem. Okay, so this is called the petiole. And within the leaf, you've got the xylem in the upper area and the phloem in the, in the lower area. Okay. So here I'm showing you, um, on the left is the dicot stem and the right is monocot stem. Sometimes you'll be given the micrograph and the stem and we ask to compare. So when you ask to compare, you need to know what are the words that you can use to describe the similarity and differences, okay? So see, this is, this is dicot and this monocot. Even though in the syllabus, it is not mentioned that you need to know the location of xylem and phloem in monocot, but they can give you an exam for you to compare because you can see here, these are the xylem, uh, these are the vascular bundles, okay? You can know that these are vascular bundles versus the vascular bundles here, how are they different? So you can be asked to compare. So I'm, I'm showing you here for you to compare, okay? So mainly it's in the table. Vascular bundle here is peripheral. Rest over here is scattered throughout, okay? And the pith is in the center. Here, there is no central pith. You cannot see a, a pith here. It's all the parent chimas are located in the entire stem. So there's no specific pith because pith is supposed to be after the epidermis, cortex, endodermis, then only is the pith. So there's no endodermis here that you can see. There's no pericycle that you can see. So there's no pith here. Cambium is present. Cambium is usually absent in monocot stem and monocot root. Usually you cannot see cambium because usually monocot, they, don't, they will not grow very, very big one. Usually they're herbaceous. So they do not have cambium for additional growth for the plant body, okay? Secondary thickening is visible. Secondary thickening is rare in monocot. 
Now, this is a root. Left side is dicot, right side is monocot. You can see they're actually very different. So how do you describe the differences? Okay, so I'm going to enlarge the center, the, the, the steel, so they can see it more clearly. So xylem is commonly um, four to five pointed star, so tetra or penta. Whereas here, you can see there is many, many pointed star, right? So it's called polyarch. Then uh, endodermis, now because this mature is very easy to see, uh, in an immature root, young roots, right? Usually endodermis is not very easy, easily defined. You cannot really define the endodermis, but in this case, they are very mature, so the wall is even red in color. So this one you can easily define. Sometimes when the wall is not red color, like this one, like this, it's not very easily defined, okay? Cambium is usually visible. Can you see the cells here that are very flat, like brick shape? So this is the cambium. So you can see cambium here, okay? Here, right? About here, you got two to three layers of cambium, cambial cell. Here, maybe two layers. Okay, so xylem, cambium, phloem. This is the endodermis because you've got the, the uh, suberin wall. Then immediately below the endodermis, this layer of cell is pericycle. Pericycle. Okay, now here usually in the monocot, you cannot find uh, cam cambium. It's poorly defined. Okay, not very obvious. Usually it's not there, okay? In this specimen here, it looks like you can see cambium here. Can you see this tiny cell that the wall is, is very, very thin and the cells are tiniest among the rest of the cell is the cambium. Usually you cannot find out in this slide, you can see very clearly because it's very well stained, okay? Can you see the, the packing cells in the cortex? Irregularly shaped, these are parent chyma cells that are very big. Okay, and then this is the endodermis is very well defined in the monocot root. Immediately below it, this is the pericycle layer. Okay, can you see this cell is very different from surrounding cell, this pericycle layer. So for the leaf, monocot, uh, dicot versus monocot is very different because the vein of the leaf in dicot runs like net-like. Okay, so therefore, when you section the leaf, uh, not only you will find the, the, the vein running, um, so when you section this way, not only you'll find vein that's cut in transverse section, you'll find vein that's cut in oblique section as well as cut in longitudinal section because the vein are net like versus the vein here are all parallel. So when you, when you make a transverse section, you only see veins that are all transverse section all cut in transverse section, okay? So I'll show you the, hang on, I'll show you later on. Huh? So central vein are usually very um, pronounced. So that means very obvious with associated and associated mid-rib. Mid-rib means, you see this center of the leaf is called the mid-rib. It's like the rib cage of our lungs, right? In the center here. So this is called mid means middle, rib means like rib cage. It's very obvious, okay? Palisade spongy mesophyll are very well defined. Monocot leaf veins are parallel. So all sections of the vein, when you see in transverse section of the leaf, they're all transverse section. And usually they don't, do not have pronounced central vein because all the veins look the same in the size. So the central vein usually is not very pronounced. It means not, not very like, obvious and big compared to the rest of the vein. Mesophyll. Mesophyll means the tissue in the middle of the leaf. Meso, meso means center, okay, center of the leaf. Uh, not always clearly subdivided into palisade and spongy mesophyll, right? So this is dicot leaf. Can you see? Upper and lower epidermis. And you see now upper epidermal cells are actually bigger than lower epidermal cells. And you can see this pink color transparent layer is the cuticle. Then you see you've got a palisade, about two layers of palisade or three layers of palisade cells. And this is spongy mesophyll, made of spongy mesophyll cells. Spongy because a lot of air spaces. So this tissue is spongy mesophyll. 
because it's made up of cells in the center. Mesophyll means the center of leaf, which is spongy. Okay. Now, um, focus on the veins. Can you see this central vein is very pronounced, means very obvious and big, found in the mid rib means center of the leaf. Then you see the, the side veins. You can see this is longitudinal section. And you can see the wall, that's lignified wall. Can you see not? And then here, lignified wall as well. On top, bottom are the phloem. All right. Lignified wall on top. Xylem, bottom is the phloem, unlignified wall. So you can only find veins that are running longitudinally in the dicot leaf. Monocot, so this one is dicot leaf. So this vein is transverse section. This vein is longitudinal section. Okay, you can see a lot of chloroplasts inside the plant, uh, in, inside the leaf, uh, which is red color in this case here. Yeah. Small, tiny little grains here, these are all the chloroplasts, and this is the nucleus, because you can see only one dot in all the cells, the peripheral, okay? Spongy mesophyll cell, again, you can see that all the chloroplasts are at the side, because center is the chloro center is the vacuole, then this is the nucleus, then these are the, these two are the gut cells, right? Gut cells, which is also photosynthetic, that's why you can see some pink color structures inside here, but very dense, then the stoma, then the thin, thin color layer here, these are the cuticle, right? The thin color transparent layer here, these are the cuticle, okay? So it's very interesting. This one got stoma on upper epidermis and lower epidermis also got stoma. So this is very interesting. Rarely we got stoma in the upper epidermis one. Huh? So this one is dicot leaf. Can you see that all the vascular bundles are transverse section? Okay, all vascular bundle are transverse section. And this is, um, see, this is a hair-like structure called trichome. This is called trichome. Okay, so trichome sometimes is made up of one cell, right? So this it could be continuous with this cell. So it could be made out of one cell. Sometimes it could be made out of a few cells to form one trichome. Sometimes the cell at the bottom is two cells and top is one cell. So trichome can be continuous with epidermis, okay, as an epidermal cell, or it can be a separate cell or a few cells to form the trichome, okay, the hair of the cell. So this is the stoma with the gut cell here, right? Stoma with the gut cell. Very, very easy to identify the gut cells. Look for the substomatal air spaces. So behind the stoma, always there will be substomatal air spaces. So this is how you want to look for gut cell. Don't look for the gut cell first. Look for the air spaces first, below the epidermis. Air spaces below epidermis, then look for the gut cell. So very easy to identify. Okay. So one more thing I want you to learn for today's lesson is, so you need to make plan drawings. So in biological drawing, there are two types of biological drawing. The first one is plan drawing and the second one is detailed drawing. You have already learned how to make detailed drawing. Detailed drawing means you have to draw the cells and all the organelles of the cells that you have learned, as well as including the structure that's outside the cell that's produced by the cell. For example, cuticle is outside the cell, but it's made by the cell. So you have to draw cuticle if you are drawing the cell. But if you're asked to draw plan drawing, plan drawing is different. Plan drawing means you outline the tissue layers. So like in this case here, if you're given a micrograph, um, you, if you're asked to draw plan drawing, means you draw this drawing here. So you outline all the tissue layers, the epidermis, cortex, uh, a cambium, pericycle, phloem, cambium, xylem, and then the central pit is empty in this case here. Okay, and then sometimes it's got scleron chyma here, so you need to draw a colon chyma that you need to outline. So this is called plan drawing. Okay, so there's this. Um, this is a leaf with the cells, and this is sample of the plan drawing. Okay, so you can read from the PowerPoint, from chapter one PowerPoint. Huh? Now, this is sample drawing. Students are asked to draw plan drawing. Can you see that? How come the drawings are different? 
right? So this one is correct because this vascular bundle, uh, but it's not complete. So the student have to draw to, to, to separate the xylem and phloem. So this is correct. This is wrong because um, of the cuticle. Cuticle is not made out of cells, so it's not tissue. So you cannot draw cuticle. This one is still acceptable. You're showing that there's a, there's a space here, which is actually the stoma. This is okay. This is wrong because the, the student actually draw the cells and the air spaces. This is worse. This is not, this is not planned drawing. This is called detailed drawing. Okay. So um, therefore, your homework is you need to draw planned drawing for um, so for all this, for this micrograph, this micrograph, this one, and this one, and this one, which is in a separate worksheet which I'll show you where is the worksheet in the Dropbox, okay? It's in chapter one, okay? It's in chapter one. So that's all for today.